terms of, of research uh, that, that we use to, uh, let's say, strengthen the approach that we use in functional range release, uh, there's, there's various uh, components and various lines of research that we took in order to experiment with, with new ways to, to release soft, soft tissue. Um, for example, one of the, the concepts that come, came out of the research, uh, if you read the works uh, of Schlepp, for example, um, is the idea of, uh, of thixotripsy. Um, thixotripsy is the idea of, of taking a substance and moving it from a more gel state uh, to a more fluid state, um, which has been confirmed to actually occur in fascia. Uh, the problem is uh, that in order for thixotripsy to occur, the amount of uh, the pressure has to be sustained for, for a very long period of time. That period can be anywhere between you know, two minutes and an hour if you look at the research as a whole. So the concept of just taking a soft tissue, applying a force, lengthening that tissue uh, under your finger, uh, and then shortening again and then doing it all over again as, as occurs with a, with a myofascial release uh, type treatment, um, doesn't really affect the plasticity of the tissue. So you, you in fact, will not cause any uh, lasting plastic deformation or plastic changes in the, uh, the fascial tissue itself. Um, so one of the ideas with functional range release is that you're working the end range. Um, the system is based on really the last 10 degrees of available motion um, and the technique involves remaining in that last 10 degrees for, for longer periods of time. From that, uh, the treatment, you start to incorporate PALES contractions um, and PALES training in which you're, you're, you're in that range of motion for uh, a substantial amount of time um, when the person, let's say, goes home after a treatment and, and has to do their, their assigned uh, pails exercises and stretches. Um, so therefore, we can actually get that plastic deformation in the fascial tissue, which is, which is our target. Um, as well as during the treatment, of course, we're going to increase that person's range of motion uh, temporarily with pails contractions uh, and then by doing so, the treatment itself will be able to access uh, newer ranges or uh, newer areas of soft tissue tension that, that you would not know have been existent if you just did uh, you know, one regular pass from uh, shortened to a, a quote-unquote lengthened position. I say quote-unquote because that lengthened position really isn't the end range of the tissue. Uh, it's just once again what the nervous system is allowing you to get. The concepts and the research uh, behind uh, thixotripsy, um, there's uh, recent work you can read uh, by uh, author named Juan, it, and that was back in 1987. Um, Courier and, and Nelson in 1992 uh, wrote a book uh, called Dynamics of uh, Human Biologic Tissue, uh, and, and once again they talk about this idea of thixotripsy uh, affecting fascia and affecting connective tissue. The other concept that we wanted to incorporate is the idea of uh, piezoelectricity. As far back as 1975, uh, researchers have been looking into the idea of uh, piezoelectricity um, playing a role in, in soft tissue dynamics. We know that piezoelectric effect occurs in bone. Um, for example, when a, a bone is loaded for a prolonged period of time, the body reacts by adding more bone. Similar to uh, soft tissue stretch, uh, some recent research has shown that when you apply a, a long, uh, an amount of soft tissue stretch into a tissue, once again you will get uh, cellular reactions which will change that tissue to accommodate the stress. Just like the muscle working out, you're getting more and more load, it will accommodate by you know, uh, increasing the diameter of the muscle. Um, soft tissue and, and, and connective tissue and fascia stretching of that tissue has the uh, ability to induce changes in, in fibroblastic activity, uh, in the way collagen is, is, is deposited, in the production of collagen, um, and, and in the, the manner or orientation in which that tissue is laid down. Uh, so a lot of the work uh, with regards to piezoelectricity um, that I was interested in came out of the works of uh, Helen uh, Langevin. Uh, Helen Langevin did a lot of studies uh, demonstrating that uh, forces put through tissue uh, will cause cytoskeletal changes 
it'll cause intercellular communication um, and that intercellular communication can actually change the appearance uh, of, of cells within connective tissue as well as the cellular function. Um, so exam for example, she showed that if you put a stretch uh, into a, a connective tissue that the fibroblasts will respond uh, by increasing in size, uh, by uh, changing their orientation, uh, and there's other research to demonstrate that the, the production of collagen will, will increase um, as well, um, getting back to the piezoelectricity, the orientation of the um, fibroblastic deposition of collagen uh, will also change. So Langevin brought about the idea of this entire body signaling type uh, concept that, that uh, treatment at, at one end of the body can affect treatment at the other end of the body through intercellular connections and that these connections can be affected uh, by soft tissue stretch. Um, so with functional range release, I, we take the emphasis away from, you know, ripping uh, adhesions and, and ripping uh, scar tissue out of, uh, out of the muscle or out of the, the soft tissue and more into the idea of altering this, this um, cellular contact or influencing the tissue rather um, to take on a, uh, or to adapt to the stress by actually deforming plastically and, and, and changing its, um, its composition by either increasing the amount of collagen or changing the, the orientation of that, that collagen. And finally, along the same lines as uh, of the holding the the tissue stretch or the application of your uh, tissue treatment for longer periods of time. Um, in 1992, Yahia, uh, I don't know how it's pronounced, Y-A-H-I-A, I believe, in 92 studied um, uh, the thoracolumbar fascia uh, in humans and found that, that in fact there it's highly innervated with, um, or there's a high concentration of mechanoreceptors. Uh, most importantly, um, they contain Ruffini organs. Uh, now, Ruffini organs are known to adapt to longer-term um, pressure or, or sustained pressure. Um, and stimulation of said of these organs um, result in a lowering of sympathetic nervous system activity. Um, what else has been found to be uh, present in fascia is, is smooth muscle. So there's the idea that uh, the uh, sympathetic nervous system might be involved and we might be influencing uh, these Ruffini end organs to then uh, cause a relaxation in the smooth muscles. Um, so research is currently showing that, that fascia has the ability to, to contract uh, which might uh, cause or might uh, explain a lot of the more acute symptoms in, involved in soft tissue uh, injury where you have uh, you know tightening of tissue that it can occur right away. Um, that immediate response can't really be explained by um, you know changes in the in the in the in the construct of the tissue itself I mean um, when someone gets injured it's not like all of a sudden adhesions are just deposited everywhere and you get an immediate response but because the the fascia is influenced so heavily by the the autonomic nervous system um, you can get fascial contraction, which might explain some of this, this the tightening that occurs post injury. Um, so, with longer term sustained pressures, we can affect these Ruffini end organs, decrease sympathetic uh, drive to the the, the smooth muscle uh, in the fascia, and therefore decrease fascial contractility. So, once again, uh, getting back to the idea of you know the the need for longer periods of, of uh, mechanical influence or, or, or tissue loading in order to, to cause real changes uh, in tissue with, with treatment.